Hello everyone, I'm Jen Sin. Today is Tuesday, December 1st, and from the return of Ohio State football to some changes coming to a few Lucas County schools, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop tonight. But first, I do want to share with you ways you can help the family of the late Toledo Police Officer Kevin Dumas. Now, if you didn't know, Officer Dumas passed away unexpectedly on Thanksgiving morning. The 46-year-old has been described as a friend and a teacher to everyone. If you would like to help his family pay for the unexpected funeral expenses, there is now a GoFundMe available online that you can donate to, or if you prefer to donate in person, there is a memorial fund set up at the police and firefighter credit union. So I have a link to more information on how you can donate in the description of this video if you do wish to help the family during this difficult time. And new tonight, red light cameras will be back up and running in Toledo as soon as next April after City Council approved the new ordinance just this evening. The intersection between Secor Road and Monroe Street in West Toledo is just one of the few busy intersections that already had one of these cameras not long ago, and the city is working to install them once again. So while this ordinance did pass, it wasn't without some pushback. So four council members voted against the ordinance and eight were in favor. Uh, the red light ticket program was put on hold back in June when the Ohio Supreme Court ruled it wasn't fair for an officer to handle the appeals process for tickets given out from their own department. Uh, but after this new vote, anyone who is ticketed by a camera will be able to appeal the ticket through the court system. The city also plans to increase signage to let drivers know when they're approaching an intersection that has one of those red light cameras there. And if you are missing, oh, say, you know, around 135 pounds of marijuana, don't worry. The Williams County Sheriff has it locked up safe in the lost and found. The Sheriff's Office shared a post this morning that shows off the stash, encouraging anyone who may be missing it to just go ahead and contact the detectives to claim it. So authorities apparently received a tip this morning, which led them to all 135 pounds of it along the side of the road somewhere in the county. So detectives did refuse to say which street it was on. So far, there is no word on if anyone's tried to claim the weed yet. But if you do know anything, you're asked to call the Detectives Bureau at 419-636-3151. And while we do have our sights set on Northwest Ohio, let's get a quick update on our weather. Tonight will be cold again with a refreeze of all that wet stuff that's on the ground. Icy spots will likely continue into tomorrow morning. So again, as a heads up, some slippery travel is expected. But our first alert weather team says no major cold or storms are on deck for the next 10 days. So we'll have a typical December feeling with highs popping around near 40. And those warm temps will be great for some football, right? The Ohio State Buckeyes are officially resuming team activities in preparation for Saturday's game at Michigan State. The Buckeyes will do this while continuing to manage all of the issues that they have with COVID-19. And they will be without coach Ryan Day, who has tested positive last week. Defensive line coach Larry Johnson is assuming those head coaching duties for the week and for Saturday's game in East Lansing. So if you didn't know, Ohio State chose to cancel its game at Illinois last week because of an unacceptable number of COVID cases uh, in its players and staff within the program. So Ohio State needs to play this week and next week against Michigan to have enough games in to be eligible for the Big Ten title. So we'll keep you updated if anything changes. But let's take a look here to the state of coronavirus in Ohio as a whole. So there was no press conference with Ohio Governor Mike DeWine today. So I'm just going to break down some of this data. As a note, when we look at case numbers specifically, the health department is still behind on thousands of reports. So that's because they do follow-ups on all of the antigen or the rapid tests. Uh, there are now so many of those that the Department of Health is overwhelmed. But the good news is we should be getting some clarity soon. DeWine said yesterday that a new system will be put into place sometime in the next 10 days and that will catch us up on all of these backlogged reports. But that's to come, so stay tuned. Here is what's being reported as of today. So today there were 9,030 new cases of coronavirus compared to the 21-day average of 8,029. There were 119 new deaths reported compared to the 21-day average of 48. There were 585 hospitalizations compared to the 21-day average of 305, which is a new record, and 47 ICU admissions compared to the 21-day average of 31. And locally, we are seeing this have an impact on our schools. So we know the Lucas County Health Department ordered last week that all 7th through 12th grade students start remote learning next week. 
but more and more schools are starting to make the call to extend that to students of all grade levels. So today, leaders with both Maumee and Ottawa Hill School Districts said that all K-12 students would begin remote learning next Monday, December 7th, and will return January 11th. So for Ottawa Hills, some exceptions may be made for special needs students. So this decision was actually made after school leaders with both districts met up with county health officials. And they were reportedly told by the health department that Lucas County is expected to move to the watch list on the state's coronavirus map this Thursday with the potential to then move to level four purple, the highest level, next week. So just for a pause, what is the watch list? What does that mean? The watch list means that a county currently meets all of the criteria to be at level four purple. However, the way the system is designed, it requires that county to trigger all of those indicators two weeks in a row just to make sure that that is a consistent trend in the data. So uh, just to remind you, Wood County was put on the watch list last week. So this Thursday, we'll also find out if Wood County is elevated to purple or if they will stay at red. So we'll keep you posted on all of that. And the Lucas County Health Department is receiving a lot of pushback on that school order. Parents protested on Thanksgiving in Ottawa Hills, and now the Ohio Christian Education Network is requesting that the department rescinds the order before it goes into effect on Friday, or at the very least delays its start so they can let their voices be heard. A lawyer out of the Cincinnati area, Brian Fox, sent a letter to the health leaders on behalf of this group calling the order unconstitutional. Fox claimed that the health order is enforced, if it's enforced, member schools would effectively be barred from providing daily in-person mentorship and training of religious values for several grade levels, engaging in corporate prayer throughout the day, collectively sharing musical worship and communal recognition, spiritually encouraging and praying for individual students. He said in the letter, quote, each of these religious rights and responsibilities is sacred to member schools and the families who choose private religious education and, as a consequence, are guaranteed by the First Amendment. So the letter then went on to claim that forced quarantines have a negative impact on those 7th through 12th grade students, and the department was cherry-picking data and exaggerating concerns over in-person instruction's impact on transmission, and the letter did point out that other sectors and businesses have not been shuttered despite concerns surrounding community spread of COVID-19. Fox said that members of OCEN just they just want to have their voices heard and would prefer to sit down with health leaders to figure out a way to come to a, an agreement to settle these differences and balance those competing interests. However, he did say that litigation is an option. So, so far the health department hasn't responded to these claims or to the letter, um, but we will definitely keep you updated when and if they do. And as a note, the health department will be having a special press conference, a special meeting on Thursday at 10 a.m. regarding school orders. So we'll be streaming that live on our Facebook page and on WTOL.com. But nationally, lawmakers do seem to be making some headway on a new relief package as the holidays approach. So there's a proposal for a $908 billion bipartisan stimulus plan that was unveiled today. But I should warn you, as it stands right now, it doesn't include another round of $1,200 stimulus checks. But here's what it does include. There we go. Uh, $228 billion to extend and upgrade paycheck protection subsidies for hard-hit businesses like restaurants. It would revive a special jobless benefit, but at a reduced level of $300 per week, rather than that $600 benefit that was enacted back in March. State and local governments would also receive $160 billion, and there will be money reserved for a vaccine. But again, this is just a proposal. Nothing has been voted on, and things could always change, so I will be sure to keep you updated every step of the way. And also today, Attorney General William Barr said the Justice Department has not uncovered evidence of widespread voter fraud and or at least any that would have any meaningful change to the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. So these comments came in an interview with the Associated Press, despite President Donald Trump's repeated claims that the election was stolen. Barr said U.S. attorneys and FBI agents have been working to follow up on specific complaints and information they've received, but they've uncovered no evidence that would change the outcome of the election. The comments are especially direct coming from Barr because he's been one of the president's strongest allies. 
Before the election, he had repeatedly claimed that mail-in mail -in voting would be especially vulnerable to fraud. Some Americans feared going to the polls in person during the pandemic and instead chose to vote by mail. So shortly after Barr's statement was published, Trump started tweeting out even more claims of voter fraud. And his attorney, Rudy Giuliani, issued a statement saying, quote, with all due respect to the attorney general, there hasn't been any semblance of an investigation. And switching gears completely here, Elliot Page, the Oscar-nominated star of Juno and the Umbrella Academy, shared today that he is transgender. Page asked for patience and acknowledged that he was scared of the invasiveness, the hate, the jokes, and of violence. He said, quote, the discrimination towards trans people is rife, insidious, and cruel, resulting in horrific consequences. However, the 33-year-old did write in a statement posted on Twitter and Instagram that he's feeling overwhelming gratitude for the incredible people who have supported him along this journey. And before I go, I want to share this with you. The folks at Starbucks said today that people who identify themselves as frontline workers at one of their participating stores will receive an iced or hot brewed coffee for free. Starbucks said the deal is for tall brewed coffees and will be offered at U.S. company operated locations as well as select licensed stores throughout the month of December. So the company came up with a deal because it has been an extreme, an extremely difficult year, especially for those frontline workers who have been serving their communities. So here's a specific list of who is eligible. Doctors, nurses, public health workers, pharmacists, dispatchers, firefighters, paramedics, police officers, dentists and dental hygienists, mental health workers, and hospital staff like janitor, housekeeping, security, and active duty military. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you are in the loop.